What's the haps? I'm Morocco and welcome, welcome back to Valhalla! Uh, it's been another one of those weekends where I had a touch more to drink than maybe I should have, so um, we're going with another non-alcoholic drink today. Uh, I'm going to make tea! Mm. I've already made, started making tea. Never teapot, it is full of tea. It's currently steeping, as tea is wont to do. Um, yeah, so let's talk tea. I have this stuff. It is a. Uh, can you really see? Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Uh, blended Earl Grey with cornflowers, and a website for the company from whom you could presumably purchase these things. I got it on like a market stall, so this is just like a little couple somewhere in Yorkshire that go around to market stores and sell teas and coffees and things. And I got a very nice coffee that the bag burst on it and I lost most of the coffee, so... Uh, it was a shame, it was a very nice coffee. It was like a chocolate mint coffee, it was amazing. Um, and I got this stuff, which was Earl Grey with cornflowers. Uh, what difference cornflowers make to your tea, I don't know. But they add... you probably almost certainly cannot see it. Oh yeah, you can just kind of about see it. Uh, it's got like blue flowers in it. it. Looks very pretty. I've had this bag for probably far longer than you're supposed to have tea for, because I don't drink nearly as much tea as I feel like I could otherwise do. Uh, this tea is a blend of the finest China Keeman and Darjeeling leaf tea scented with the oil of bergamot. That's what you need to know. I don't know a lot about teas if I'm honest. Um, I just appreciate a few nice ones from time to time. Uh, so yeah, drinking that. It's... Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how long you can keep loose leaf tea for. However long it is, I'm sure I have kept it for longer than that at this stage. Um, I should look at getting new teas, but I feel bad that I haven't used up all my old teas, so... Yeah, these things never happen, so... I just have a few bags of slightly older than I should have tea now. So we are gonna pour... A cup... Alexa... I, I, I don't know how to make this teapot work well, actually. Um, it always comes... The, fir the first part of the pour is comes out looking really weak and insipid, and then the colour of the tea kind of darkens up as you pour it out, and uh, no matter how much I, if I like to try stirring the leaves and, you know, agitating it so it's more of an even blend throughout the pot, no, nah, it doesn't seem to work that way. It's like the first part of the pour comes out like, just looks like it's just pouring hot water, and then, like, after I poured a bit of tea, it starts coming out dark, it's like, oh, that looks like tea now. So, beats me, I don't know. Um, now I have tea. Cheers. And yes, I am using milk in Earl Grey. I apologize, um, but I like milk in Earl Grey. You're not really supposed to, but as I've made abundantly clear multiple times throughout recording these videos, drinks really... you shouldn't, you know, try to follow quite so slavishly to tradition with drinks. You should just make drinks how you enjoy drinks. If you enjoy having a drink a certain way, even if that's not the traditional way to drink it, uh, you should probably drink it the way you like it. Because, why else? Why would you drink it any other way? Makes no sense. We need uh, 10 grand in the next three days, and we need an Alex doll. Okay. Well, you've been using that hoodie a lot lately. Oh, shut up. Alright, let's go to the shop. Let's go have a look at that Alex doll we needed. Uh, how much is it? From Cult Classic Video Game, Y2K, $350 dollars dues. I can swing $350, I think. $350? I think so. Go on, go on. I'd better get some good money these next two days, otherwise I'm going to be evicted, and that's going to be bad times. Very bad times. Okay. I, ho I, ho I hope this dollar's worth it, Jill. I really do. Uh, where, where is the doll in the room? I don't see... Oh, it's on the shelf next to the weird, stripy, Christmas-looking creeper thing. Um, yeah, there it is. Real-time beard-growing doll, just for that product placement. This game's... I, I, I wonder if the devs are actually really big fans of Y2K, or if it's just the publisher's influence that they were really sort of encouraged them to make lots of references. To that end, I can't help but wonder if Y2K is going to have quite as many references to Valhalla in it. I wonder if it goes both ways. Weird requirements from the publisher, I guess, but hey. Okay. Augmented Eye, what is in the news? Glitch City Olympics return next year. For the 10th consecutive year, the Glitch City Olympics returns the emblematic Super Silver Thunderdome, this time with a representative from the elusive country of Kanyevania. This kind of keeps coming up again. 
Uh, Prime Minister Quincy, who is in charge of the committee, told the Augmented Eye that it wasn't easy getting in touch with Kanye. Kanye? Kanye? It seems like the J would be silent. It should be Kanye? I don't know. I, I don't know how you pronounce that particular weird quirk of naming. Um, we had to abide by some of his religious rules in order to see some of the best competitors come to the country. Kanyevania's religion, Kanyeism, prohibits the existence of nanomachines inside the body, and as such, competitors from from said country had to perform specific treatments in order to repel the swarm. It's a temporary solution, but it will do the trick. Interesting. Uh, oh no, clickbait! You won't believe what happens in this cartoon. Uh, cartoons are not for children. They're still largely colourful, but the themes they touch have become rather dark. In fact, that happened about 60 years ago, to be honest. In fact, every cartoon on air today has dark themes. It's to the point where innocent animated characters are no longer a thing. Uh, I suppose children are young adults from birth now. And But enter Touch Fluffy Tail, a new show that aims to challenge the current trend. No deep lore, no obscure adult references, no stupid deep plots, just fun with numbers and fluffy tails, said a TFT producer. You must remain anonymous to avoid internet backlash. I don't want death threats for making a cartoon for actual kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would actually happen, and I'm pretty sure anything about Fluffy Tails, the internet could find a way to make perverted. Yeah, stop. I rescued you. I want to touch your tail if I wanna. Uh, Street Trace of the Motor City District leaves two dead. Uh, the Motor City District is notorious for the number of illegal street races it sees each week, and the dozens of injured drivers it leaves every year. This time it has been reported that two people died during a race hosted at the Gate Highway, otherwise known as Death Lane. Transit Police is currently investigating the deaths, as well as the underground world of illegal street racing. There are several suspects in regards to, this in, in regards to who is running this under underworld, but nothing concrete as of yet. Chief of Transit Police Department J. Esposito said, uh, told the Augmented Eye, the death of these two youngsters will be the last, however. That's a promise. I've had this defamation campaign against the district, though. Alrighty, that's uh, all we got, I guess? Have we read these things? It seems like there are opinions on here each time, and I'm not necessarily reading them, because it's not got, it hasn't got the little thing to tell me this new stuff. Um... Yeah, I don't think we've seen this thread before, have we? Fair enough. Oh well. Uh, yeah, uh, let's uh, let's just go to work, I guess. Uh, is your lip trembling? No. It's gonna work. Let's do that. Monday, December twenty-sixth, Boxing Day. <sighs> Evening. Hey, Jill. Jill is in the back sorting an ingredient shipment, and I've got things to do. The dog's in charge. Okay, bye. No, the dog's not in charge. No. Wait, the, the dog what? Okay, first order, pet me. No. Pet me. No. I'm in charge and I want you to pet me. <laughs> oh, Rad Sheba. I found the devs have made a t-shirt that's Rad Sheba themed and I'm like, oh man, I would really like a Valhalla t-shirt, but... I don't think I would want a Rad Sheba thing. Oh yeah, someone someone said, oh, you can probably get a preview of the music by doing that. Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, but, um, I ain't got no time for that. Let's pick some things. I want to know, I still want to know where I get the other tracks from. Uh, I don't even know what I'm picking today. I'm just clicking random things. Uh, Metropolis. Um, not Base of the Titans. I know I don't like that one. Cool. Alright, time to mix drinks and change lives. Hey, Jay. Won't pet you. You'll pet me sooner or later. They all do. Won't. No. You called? <laughs> he said Will, not Gil. Oh. Uh, who the hell is Will? <laughs> no, pussy. Don't be rude with poor Will. There's no Will. You need me to psych you up, then. Shut up. Who? Me or Will? Ah! You go back to whatever you were doing. Alright. And you... Stand by. Only if you pet me. Go! The fuck just happens? Well, aren't we through there? Welcome to Valha... Uh, Virgilio? Why are you... Why are you down here without? 
been a while I've just as I've done his voice, I kind of I forgot for a moment there what his voice was. Uh, you didn't show up with a with a bombastic soliloquy? Well, putting up an act can be tiring, you know. So it's all, all an act then? Wasn't it obvious? I guess. Or should I have like an entirely different voice from him for when he's not acting? Probably not, but... Kind of like... I like the idea that he's just turned out this is just like an entirely different person today. Am I getting the oblivia? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Tea is um, apparently not working well with me. Oh, would you mind getting me a bleeding Jane? Uh, sure. Um, Virgilio wants a bleeding Jane. Okay then. One Bronson, one, two, three Delta, and three Flanagides. All blended. Okay. Non alcoholic one. It is, oh, it is sobering. It is kind of like a. In, in some ways, a kind of a hair of the dog kind of thing, which um, the Bloody Mary is, I believe, supposed to be. Oh, Bleeding Jane. Ah, Bleeding Jane. Yes, this is just the thing. So, tired of putting on an axe? Care to explain? It's a long story. I'd honestly rather not talk about it right now. Fair enough. What made you change your mind, though? Well, for one thing, it's safer for me now. The pompous buffoon act was mostly a way to avoid raising suspicion. Safer? That's a word that's been losing meaning lately. Wait, that was your way of avoiding suspicion? Yes. You do know how weird that sounds, right? It sounds weird? You try not to raise suspicion, but you act in a bombastic manner that screams you're there. And everyone dismisses the fool as a buffoon and moves on. Eh? I mean, you might be right if I were talking, talking about hiding myself. But I'm avoiding certain, um, crowd of people. Yes, my behavior might call everyone's attention, but uh, then everyone just decides I'm harmless and disregards me. And depending on how erratic my actions are, I become harder to read. Giving me yet another layer of enigma. I... Huh. Well, congrats. No offense, but I fell right into your plan. I just, mis just dismissed your actions as those of a fool and moved on. You, you completely fooled me. Thanks. So, can you g give me something spicy? Uh, sure. Something spicy. Something spicy. Something spicy and relatively expensive. Mars Blast 170. Uh, Bleeding Jane, 200. I just gave him one of those, though. Bloom Light, 230. It is spicy. It is a promo. It is bland, but um, it is spicy. It does the job. One Powder Delta, two Flanner Giant, and three <laughs> Carmatrine. Aged and on the rocks and mixed. That is a spicy drink. Okay, here you go. Aren't you fascinated by spiciness? Wait, this sounds like he's gone back to normal. <laughs> or what I thought of as normal. Uh, what's spicy for humans might not be spicy for other animals. Hell, what's toxic for us might not be for other creatures. Do you like spicy things, bartender? I don't mind them, I guess, but I'm not really a fan. That neutral, neutral stance is actually weird to come across. Everyone either loves spicy things or hates them with passion. Do you like? Uh, do you like it? Lots. Not only in regard to painfully spicy things, but also the way mild or slight, sp slight spice adds to a meal. I've always had this dream of opening a curry stand. There's something in the cheeves about helping a guy open a curry stand. Oh my god. Are we going to work with Virgilio over here? Which means this isn't actually his real name, is it? Because the guy who opens the curry stand wasn't called Virgilio. Uh, I'm loath to I can't remember what it was now. So, no spoilers there, because I can't remember the spoilers. Um... But yeah, he's going to tell us he's, his name is something entirely else soon. That's interesting. Um, I can't look at the achievements now until he tells us what it is for fear of spoiling myself. So yeah, there's that. So, well, that's a twist. I genuinely thought they were going to introduce a new character and have us open a curry stand with him, but no. Okay. Oh, things are, I might actually pursue that dream. Let me know if you do. I haven't had curry in ages now. Hey, Bartolo. Call me Jill. I wanted to apologize. Hmm? You put up with me all this time without laughing out. I thought apologize for my behavior and I thank you at that. I don't worry, I actually feel like I was too rude to you last time you came. Granted, you came at a really bad time, but... 
I should be the one apologizing. You're a client, after all. Well, don't. I'm actually surprised nobody else had violently lashed out at me yet. You're making me curious as to who you really are, though. Is Virgilio even your real name? It might be it, might not. Yay! He's still being enigmatic. Cool. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss the old Virgilio, though. I like the old Virgilio. Sometimes I wonder if I'm a magnet for people who hide their identities in sordid pasts. Gil, Jamie, you... Um, did you say something? I'm just rambling, pay me no mind. Uh, now, that I, now that I think about it, how did you find this bar? I was uh, avoiding some chaps and came to this alley. Huh, again. Again? In my time here I've heard avoided people and ended up here enough times to make me believe uh, the original owner built the bar here thinking about the runaway public. You made me sound like a criminal. You're not helping. The expression runaway doesn't just mean people escaping the law, though. We had people avoiding stalkers or solicitors. I've seen people more shocked by an insistent salesman than a shady figure. Maybe because the salesman is a more active predator? I don't know. The troublesome part of the city right near the shopping district. Uh, let them know there's a bar and they'll come. Sorry, I should stop rambling to myself so much. I don't mind it. Would you think I'm a sort of criminal, though? Um, like I said, you're not helping. But for all I know, you might be the buffoon I've seen the, uh, the other days. In any case, can I get something bitter here? I'm on it. Okay. A... 220 Grizzly Temple. That's probably about as good as we're gonna get. Because... was a promo. Go punches a cheap. Yeah, Grizzly Temple. Okay. That'll hide. Um, three Bronson. Three Powder Delta. And one Carmatrine. All blended. Now, as, well, as regards that drink that nobody has ever ordered, I saw someone posted something on Twitter at one point that mentioned a crevice spike in a, in a context that sounded like it was that drink. But... I'm sure we've served that to people for reasons before and nothing, nothing's come up. I'm gonna, next time someone gives us an option to serve a crevice spike, I probably should go about doing that. I mean, what does that, what does that one come under? It's a... if someone wants a sour or a manly drink, that might be the one. It's uh, sobering, which means it can be a kind of a hair of the dog kind of thing, hangover cure sort of thing. Maybe. It'll knock the drunkenness out of you or knock you out cold. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Either wakes you up, because hair of the dog, or optional karma tree, and you can put loads in and it'll knock, uh, knock you out cold. Yeah, interesting little drink. Uh, but we want to serve a grizzly temple. Okay, here. Well, this works. Mm, do you like coffee, Miss Bartender? As weird as it may sound from a smoking bartender, no, I don't. Well, I get it, it's not for everyone. That cat boomer the other day. What about her? Still scared of her? Uh, not really, but he looks so familiar. Oh, that's why he did the whole running away thing, because he was avoiding people. So he thought she was one of the people he was trying to avoid. Ah, that's what all that was about. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm mixing up with another cat boomer. No, that's not us. It was like the bandit girl last time. Even with the bandit, there's something really familiar about her. Oh my god, was he involved in the bank job? That would be weird. That would be very weird. Ah, maybe you need to stop thinking about it. Answers usually come to you when you stop stressing out. You might be right. Well, I leave you for now, Artender. Thanks for everything. Ah, please come again. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hello, Mr. Detective. <laughs> oh, it's Art, Art Vondele. That's, I believe, yes. Ah, here we are. Another mute person wandering into the bar. Anything I can get you? A gut punch. Okay. Gut punch for the silent detective. Oh, I don't order gut punches. Those are only $80. I don't get, no, I don't get much commission on that. Uh, Jide. Um. And throw some booze into it. Throw a little booze into it just to get the man talking. Um. Yeah. Aged. Mixed. Cool. Alrighty, here you go. Oh, he lost his rise. So what's up now? A little bit of holiday blues, you could say. So you celebrate Mega Christmas? Why wouldn't I? 
You look more like a Festivus kind of guy. Why does everyone keep saying that? Well, Festivus is a celebration going against the capitalist madness that is Mega Christmas. And, you know, cheap sky. If you have something to say, say it. I'll refrain. Although now that I think about it, Holiday Blues is not really tied to a specific celebration. Uh, just the season. Season of consumerist craze. Mega Christmas is just a mockery of what the real Christmas once was. I mean, the season has slowly become enslaved to the corporations over time. Holiday spirit can only be manipulated so much. But then came that turbo male guy. He started a yearly tradition of dressing up like Santa in the ring. Turbo male? That can't be his ring name. It is. Really? Such a tacky name was actually accepted. His partner was Buster Master and his rival was Dr. Chris Max. Tacky names were not a problem. I mean, I knew there was a wrestler that dressed as Santa every year. As a new guy became insanely popular and the stunt got out of control. And, of course, that's the part everyone sings about. Santa became Nega Santa thanks to the Redmond family. Nega Santa sees the error of his ways and becomes the mighty Mega Santa, renaming the holiday Mega Christmas. Okay. I... what? Alright. So, in the future, um, Christmas is all just a big wrestling publicity stunt. Hmm. Sure, alright. And everyone jumped on the bandwagon, Christmas became Mega Christmas, and Christmas was Mega Christmas before anyone noticed. So you're telling me that the guy who... Oh wait, was that? Oh yeah, it was an arts line. Whoops, got that one wrong. Um, so you're telling me the guy, the guy who somehow managed to rename the holiday went by the ring name Turbo Mail? Yup. That makes the whole holiday sound like a joke. Holiday is a joke. You're telling me you don't celebrate Festivus? Ugh, no I don't. You know what kind of people celebrate Festivus? The kind that's so lame and bland that they can only really talk about how they're better because they celebrate Festivus. Like those jerks who only eat nuke and think they're better than everyone else. I see. Anything else I can get you? Get me a fringe weaver, will you? Sure. Fringe weaver! That was expensive for him. Alright. Nine of those. Uh, aged and mixed. Sure. Here you go. Alright, thanks. So, any issues with the city lately? What's the word on the street? Shouldn't I be asking that? There's nothing new, really. Lynchings of White Knight stopped, so there's that. Really? There's something about the armor. I haven't gotten much on that one yet. All in all, the madness following the attack on the bank seems to have settled down a bit. That's good to hear. Have any other details about the attack emerged yet? All records of whatever happened there have been long deleted. Security cam, system logs, everything was wiped. And whatever happened there, it's become even more of a mystery now. I wonder if Say plans on testifying. Does anyone know if Say went there, went, went there in the first... Does anyone know if Say went there in the first place? Maybe the wiping of everything actually protects us somehow. Hey, bartender, are you okay? Oh, sorry, I got distracted. Well, there's not much to say, really. Uh, there's the odd silly rumor here there, that here and there, like the vending machine's tasers malfunctioning and applying more strength. Or that the right of the last rain in the world is actually living here as a brain in the jar. Yeah, on that one. Maybe. Maybe. Could be. Depends if Taylor uh, wrote the last rain in the world. Because um, I wasn't aware of that part of Taylor's career. But uh, those are the kind of rumors you hear from crackheads. Crackheads might hold that one last piece of info you need, but you also hear crap like that. I see. Anyway, I'm leaving. Happy New Year, bartender. Please come again. Okay, then, um... But... No, no, wait, she's out. Gil, you're there! Yeah? Taking your break? Let me know if someone comes in. Um... That was a really short half, um, I may just have to smoosh those two episodes together in post. So, yeah. Let's, uh, save that there on the final page. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know where I'm going to save it at the end of this day. This is better be the last day in the game, frankly, because otherwise I'm running out of spaces. Oh, well. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.